So the New England Patriots are signing wide receiver K.J. Osborne to a one-year deal worth $4 million. Now, what the Patriots have loved to do this offseason is signing their guys to very incentive-based contracts. So we still have to see the numbers on this, but it wouldn't surprise me if K.J. Osborne is only going to make like a base salary of $1.2 to like $2 million. But this is a very, very good and respectable contract for the guy that the Patriots are getting. And straight off the bat, before we break down this video, I think that this is going to be one of the most underrated signings by the Patriots all offseason long by the fan base. I think that this is going to be one of the more undervalued signings in the NFL period. I absolutely love this signing, and I know that it's not a true number one guy, but I think you guys very well could fall in love with K.J. Osborne this upcoming season the way you did with Kendrick Bourne just back in 2021. And so first off, welcome the New England Patriots to the free agency board. Okay, we thought that wide receiver was going to be a major need for them this offseason, and it sounded like they thought the same thing. It's been almost a week now. Okay, it's been six days since the legal tampering period and free agency has started, and this is the first wide receiver that the Patriots are signing to their team that wasn't here just back in 2000. But... Osborne is still fairly young. He's only 26 years old. He originally entered the league as a fifth round pick by the Minnesota Vikings back in 2020. That is when Minnesota actually splurged at the wide receiver position. They got Jay Jettas and then they got KJ Osborne. Now, the biggest question I think a lot of you are going to be asking yourselves is, is this guy a legit contender to be on the team next year or is this a camp body? This is a legit contender to be on the team next year and make an actual contribution. For the Minnesota Vikings over the last four years, it didn't necessarily start off too hot. He kind of started not so much on the roster. He had to build his way up over his four-year span with them and also served as a big return man for their special teams, which could be another reason that the Patriots are signing him. But as time went on, he very much solidified himself as a high-end wide receiver three to low-end wide receiver two. Unfortunately, that is exactly where the Patriots are currently at, right? Kendrick Bourne is kind of that same exact guy. He is a high-end number three but has that potential of being a very solid number two. You have a guy like Demario Douglas, who I want to say was first or second in terms of receiving yards for the Patriots in his rookie season this past year in 2023. He is going to be a good wide receiver three option also. So look, does this essentially move the needle in terms of what the Patriots needed, getting themselves a true wide receiver one? No. But if New England is not going to get a true wide receiver one this offseason, you know, missing out on Calvin Ridley, who was he even a real wide receiver one? I don't know. But maybe potentially missing out on guys like T. Higgins, missing out on guys like Mike Evans and, and Pittman, all these true wide receiver ones, if they're going to head into this upcoming season in 2024 without a solidified number one guy, then the second best thing is just to get a bunch of very good number two potential number three guys in the building. At 5'11", 203 pounds, I think that a lot of people are going to expect Osborne to come in and essentially be a slot receiver for the Patriots, and really exclusively a slot receiver, which is really the last thing that the Patriots need, but that's not what he's going to do. Just like Kendrick Bourne, Osborne is going to be able to play in really every single offensive alignment. Little interesting fact here, in 2021, he played 51% of his snaps in the slot at again 51%. He played 48% of his snaps out wide. In 2022, he played 59% of his snaps in the slot, 40% out wide. This past season, though, only played 35% in the slot while playing 64% out wide. So this is a guy that if the Patriots primarily want to use as an outside perimeter receiver, they can do so. But if they also want to use him in the slot, he's also able to do that. I would say throughout his career, he's been a little bit more utilized in the slot, but this past season was asked to play more wide. 
Like I said, though, I, I do think that this is going to be a guy from what I've heard that Patriots fans are going to absolutely love. And not only does he fit on the field what the Patriots are doing, because he's a technician. He fits what Alex Van Pelt's system is really all based on. I mean, guys like Kendrick Bourne, now KJ Osborne, these are guys coming in that are poised for breakout seasons with Alex Van Pelt. But he also fits what the Patriots want off the field. He is driven. He is a great personality. Again, all of this going back to, to Kendrick Bourne. I really feel like if Kendrick Bourne left the Patriots, like this is your ideal guy that you would have wanted to get. And now you kind of got two Kendrick Bournes on the field. He's motivated. He's passionate. He's a fun, fun, loving guy. And he's also a reliable guy at that. From what I heard, in times of desperate needs, it had to convert on third down throughout the last three years. Kirk Cousins, when he was with, of course, the Minnesota Vikings, would go to uh, K.J. Osborne on third down. He was that big guy to convert for them on third down. And from what I understand, he takes it that extra notch when it does get to third down. He finds ways to get creative to make sure that you're able to move the chains when you do need. Now, throughout the last three years, his statistics have, have been very similar. They've, they've pretty much been in the same ballpark. And again, that comes because in 2020, that rookie year, he didn't record a single statistic whatsoever. But in 2021, he was targeted 82 times, 50 receptions, 655 yards, averaging 13.1 yards per reception and seven touchdowns. In 2022, he was targeted 90 times, 60 receptions, 650 yards, 10.8 yards per reception and five touchdowns. And then this past year, Year. Minnesota, the fans, the fan base, everybody thought that KJ Osborne was going to take that step forward with guys like Adam Thielen out of the building. Jay Jettas obviously was dealing with injuries throughout that entire year. Thought this was going to be a guy that was going to step up and have a career season. It was actually the opposite. He actually took a step back. But interestingly enough, his targets also were the worst that he's seen so far. So it's not exactly his fault. I would say he was targeted uh, 75 times, 48 receptions, 540 yards, 11.3 yards per reception, and three touchdowns. So looking right now on the Patriots depth chart that they finally have updated now that the new league year started, thank God. Uh, but they kind of have him pinned in right now was like wide receiver four. They got Kendrick Bourne, Demario Douglas, Juju Smith-Schuster, all as your starting guys. And then you kind of get into your secondary receivers with KJ Osborne, Tyquan Thornton, Jalen Rager, and then your third receivers with like Booty and Luther and Kayshawn Baker. So, you know, kind of looking at this, this current depth chart and, and what it is right now, you would expect that KJ Osborne probably can jumpstart Juju Smith-Schuster. Who knows if Juju's still going to be on this roster come roster cutdowns. I think they're going to kind of try to take a look at that knee. I, they obviously were not able to trade him. They weren't able to trade Parker. They're not going to be able to trade Juju. Take a look at that knee. See if he's any better. If he's not, then essentially he's going to be out. They can actually save a little bit more money if they make Juju a post-June 1st cut. Not by a whole lot, but if they are going to just straight up cut him, it makes more sense to do it as a post-June 1st cut rather than to do it right now. And if Juju is gone, I think that KJ Osborne kind of plugs right in there as a wide receiver three. I think realistically, if, if this doesn't change for the Patriots, then you're kind of looking at Kendrick Bourne as that number one guy. Demario Douglas is probably that number two, number three guy. And then KJ Osborne kind of being plugged in as that number three to number four. Look, I, I know he's not a true wide receiver one. And I know that that's what the fan base wants. That's what they're they're clamoring for. And essentially, that is what the Patriots need amongst their wide receiver core right now. They have good number twos. They have good number threes. They kind of just need that number one guy to dictate coverage. But all things happen within time. And right now, this is the reality of where the Patriots are at. Again, don't get on KJ Osborne for this. I think that the Patriots are really getting a steal. Make sure you guys follow him on Instagram because he's going to be a lot of fun to kind of watch and, and catch up on on social media now that he's going to be here in Boston. So make sure you guys follow him over there. If you guys want to get some like behind the scoops kind of scenes from KJ Osborne. Um, but honestly, if the Patriots are able to get, you know, maybe eight, 900 yards from Kendrick Bourne this upcoming season, maybe they're able to get you know, six, 700 yards from the Mario Douglas. And then Osborne's able to come in and maybe give them five, 600 yards. It's not wide receiver one numbers, but you know what? That's still a lot more production that you're getting from the wide receiver group than what you're getting this past season. Again, KJ Osborne is going to come in and be a, a very, very good wide receiver, a true technician that I think is going to be an underrated signing and Patriots fans will fall in love with pretty easily. But 
What are your guys' thoughts on KJ Osborne joining New England on a one-year deal? Let me know in the comment section below. Remember to leave a big like on this video and, of course, subscribe to the channel for all of your New England Patriots news. I appreciate you guys so, so, so much for watching. And most importantly, never forget, go Pats.